Hello guys, welcome back to our channel Squad Family TV. And on the latest article guys that I found completely interesting is this one by RS Locke stating Prince Harry and Meghan are worth the royals fear most. The second coming of Princess Diana. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's recent New York City tour showcased why service is universal. And truly, without a shadow of a doubt, indeed, it is. At first blush, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex trip to New York City didn't have the usual trappings of a royal tour. There was no media briefing at the palace to review the itinerary weeks in advance. The release of Mayor Bill de Blasio's public schedule last Wednesday was the first warning that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's trip to New York would include more than an appearance at the Global Citizen Live concert. The trip may have started with a whimper, but it ended in a roar. The roar of cheers from a crowd of 60,000 strong as the couple took the stage and effectively took Manhattan. That's Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. And yes, they brought it. And yes, they took Manhattan. Once the Sussex team landed in New York, the events had a familiar feel and pace. There was the welcome photo op with local government officials, New York Governor Kathy Hochul, along with Mayor de Blasio and his family, not quite as cute as photos from the 2018 Dublin visit with Irish President Michael D. Higgins and his Bernice Mountain Dogs, but what the mayor lacked in far, he made up for in charm. National Memorial Check they enjoyed a private tour of the 9-11 memorial, sampled the local fair, check. Harry's introduction to fried chicken and waffles at Melba's in Harlem was one for the history books, supporting a black community in New York City at Melba's and donating 25000 to a local black-owned business after the effects of COVID-19 had severely impacted their business. That truly became one for the history books. All that was missing was a royal walker boat, a Sussex signature, but the woman yelling, you look so beautiful, girl, I love you, boo, as Meghan and Harry left the One World Observatory, was happy to improvise. And here's the video. That was the video. Prince Harry and Meghan seem to picking up to be picking up right where they left off before the pandemic. New team, new foundation, new city, but ostensibly are doing the same work. It's the rest of the world, including those in the palace, that are still trapped in the old paradigm. Rewind seven months February when the Queen confirmed that in stepping back as senior working royals, Harry and Meghan will forfeit the duties that come with a life of public service. A Sussex, a Sussex spokesperson swiftly clapped back that we can all live a life of service. Service is universal. And let's be honest, those of the royal family don't really do service. What they simply do is visit a couple of charities for PR, take a few pictures, do absolutely nothing. Most of the charities belonging to the members of the royal family, like Kate Middleton, for instance, have gone bankrupt. A study showed that having a royal as a patron effectively does nothing for the charity. But Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's charities are all thriving, are all becoming more and more successful by the day because they put in the work. They put in the work. That's what they keep doing time and time again. The idea that public service is the sovereign territory of the royal family is laughable in its arrogance, especially when we've all spent the past 18 months celebrating the service and sacrifice of frontline and essential workers. In his interview with James Corden, Ari, Ari explained, my life is always going to be about public service. Megan signed up to that and the two of us enjoyed doing that. Still, without the HRL, H, royal patronages or the authority of the crown, Many were dismissive of the ability to have a meaningful impact. Ironically, 
when she got engaged, Meghan gave up an ambassador role with one young world that had already placed her in the same circles as Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and former President of Ireland Mary Robinson. Her humanitarian work in Rwanda, UN Women and World Vision was similarly shelved. All positions she secured on her own merit when she was just an that actress on the cable TV drama Suits and running her lifestyle blog. Meghan Markle had a life long before meeting Prince Harry. That's who she was, and I'm proud of what she was able to achieve. And that's why it's difficult to smear Meghan Markle. You can't smear someone who's already had such an impactful life long before the royal family. Meetings during last week's UN General Assembly with U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Linda Thomas Greenfield and UN Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed must have felt like a homecoming for Meghan. The former UN Women's Advocate for Political Participation and Leadership had already proven that she could hold her own in those spaces. Why would the loss of a royal seal of approval prevent her from entering it? The royals never accepted Meghan Markle because she's biracial because of the color of her skin. But look at her achievements, look at her accomplishments prior to even getting married to Prince Harry. She was already sitting at the same table with the Canadian Prime Minister, already, prior to meeting Prince Harry. She was already had a seat at the World United Nations. She already had a seat, her own seat, at the United Nations. That's who she was, and that's how difficult it is to smear Meghan Markle. Let's listen to her, please. Then I think what scares people is this idea of female empowerment is somehow threatening. Then I think what scares people is this idea of female empowerment is somehow threatening. Then I think anything is possible. You empower the women, you're empowering the women. Then I think anything is possible because with my small boys at 11 years old, we could do it. Look at her. That's Meghan Markle uplifting women already long before she even joined the royal family. So, the firm, as the royal family is popularly called, was even more short-sighted in their assessment of Harry's prospect without taxpayer funding. After nearly two decades of public service as a prince of the United Kingdom, did they expect world leaders to stop taking his calls? New phone, who dis? Those relationships and social capital are banked. While the firm thought those deposits were stored in the Bank of Windsor to be used at as the monarch and British government's discretion, they are grappling with the realization that the capital is held in the Bank of Harry, newly headquarters in Montecito, California. So guys, Prince Harry, Meghan Markle, their achievements long before getting into the royal family is absolutely remarkable. Meghan Markle's achievements, remarkable. Prince Harry's achievements, even after leaving the royal family, absolutely remarkable. Remarkable. In September, when Prince Harry met with his friend for of eight years, U.S. First Lady Jill Biden and U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin to honor the Warrior Games athletes, it wasn't as Captain General of the British Royal Marines or on behalf of his Commander-in-Chief the Queen. Now stripped of his honorary appointments for protecting and defending his wife from racism, abuse and the bigotry of the British tabloids, he spoke to athletes as a peer, a 10-year British Army veteran himself, and the founder and patron of the Invictus Games, Harry credits a trip to the 2013 Warrior Games, where he was hosted by Dr. Buddy Biden as its inspiration for the International Paralympic-style military competition, a bond sparked by this shared cause and forged over years as the First Lady attended three of the four Invictus Games remains unshaken. The president of Angola, Jao Lorenzo, added Prince Harry to his New York schedule last week. They had previously met in September 2019 when Harry visited Angola on a royal tour. Requested and funded by the British Foreign Office, that trip had the overt mission of enticing Angola to join the Commonwealth of Nations. On Friday, they met to mark a significant milestone for an Okavango Delta Conservation Project. Harry wasn't there as an emissary of the Queen or the British government, but as president of conservation and profit African Parks. The NGO just inked a 20-year agreement with the Angolan government to manage the country's two largest national parks. Look at that. Look at that. The beauty of that. Prince Harry. Prince Harry. Prince Harry, ladies and gentlemen. That's the power. That's the influence that he possesses. Harry and Meghan don't just enjoy this work. 
They are incredibly good at it and represent a formidable team. Former British ambassador to Morocco, Thomas, Thomas Riley, called Harry and Meghan amazing ambassadors who are committed and passionate about vital issues. He saw the couple win over Moroccans with their warmth and spontaneity just as they charmed Saturday's global citizen live audience. As concert goers Kendall Bell attested, Harry and Meghan not only drew the loudest cheers of the night, but even more impressive by contra contrast was the stylist as they held the ruckus crowd and rapped for a six-minute speech on vaccine equity. That's not a small feat. Is the tweet from Global Citizen, Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex joined us as Global Citizen Live to call for waiving IP rights and sharing technology to allow developing countries to produce vaccines by and for themselves. That's how we will end the pandemic, and that's the, um, absolutely amazing. To be so eloquent and accessible on a super wonky topic is a unique skill. Akshaya Kumar, Crisis Advocacy Director at Human Rights Watch noted, World Health Organization Director General Dr. Tedros Adhanom and the health experts the success convened for a virtual roundtable echoed her praise. The couple will be challenged to prove that they can be more than just attractive spokespeople. But Global Citizen co-founder Simon Moss insists the pair have been great partners and are pushing hard. In May, Global Citizen's vaccine concert mobilized more than $360 million to fund vaccine-sharing programs. And as campaign chairs, Harry and Meghan personally helped secure 13 million vaccine doses. Harry and Meghan Markle, the power, the influence, the work, the work that they put in. That's the most admirable quality that I completely love. Like the dignitaries and other celebrities who, the celebrities who took the stage on Saturday, the royal family has also found successes have a tough act to follow. That's why palace insiders and commentators continue to perpetuate the myth that Harry and Meghan left the UK because they wanted privacy. The firm desperately wanted to get the successes out of the way, but when Edis envisioned sending the pair 5,000 miles away, the environs looked more like Siberia and San than Santa Barbara. Harry and Meghan want to do rather than to be and have refused to go quietly. Thus, the collision caused with the palace that has preempted first by a pandemic and then parental leave following the birth their daughter Lily has resumed. In actuality, this battle royal to determine the face of modern royalty can be traced back 25 years. The day a 36-year-old freshly divorced Princess Diana stepped down from nearly all of her royal patronages to pursue humanitarian work independent from the royal family. She may have announced it at a press conference while Harry and Meghan chose Instagram, but the, but the parallels are undeniable. Completely, Prince Harry following in his amazing mother's footsteps. Mm -hmm. Following the, her announcement, Princess Diana began supporting the campaign to ban landmines, calling it a humanitarian issue, despite strong criticism at the time that she was interfering in government policy. Hearing a son and daughter-in-law champion vaccine access as a human right, known big farmer, and the British government are staunchly against waving vaccine patents, surely sends chills, chills down the spines of the royal family and Prime Minister Boris Johnson's staff. The farm has created the thing that they feared most, the second coming of Princess Diana. But this version is a two-headed monster with all of the star power and campaigning zeal, but with production deals at Netflix and Spotify to boot. So to answer biographer's Anna Pastana question, who are the successes representing apart from themselves? Simply read Archwell's A Letter for 2021. It opened with a bold declaration. I am mother's son and I am a son's mother. Together, we bring you Archwell. As co-founders, Prince Harry and Meghan are no longer serving as fluffers for British trade ministers or for the unofficial recruiting and retention teams for the Commonwealth of Nations. Now their priority is fulfilling his mother's legacy while building one for their own children. Prince Harry and Meghan arrived in New York with the bra bravado of DJ from Stomp the Yard announcing, I ain't rapping, nothing just me. If last week's showcase is an indication, they are a force to be reckoned with who will present themselves extraordinary well so so glad so so humbled this is an amazing amazing article by rs lock i love every single part of it to look at this picture prince harry is the father and husband that Meghan markle has that prince says diana could not have unfortunately and i'm glad that her son is honoring 
her mother's legacy helping people service to others service is universal and i'm glad i am so so humble and i am so so honored everything about this is just so amazing harry and megan keep flying higher and higher i'm so so proud of them each they are so so amazing and guys thank you thank you so much for always supporting me don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and leave a comment below tell us what you think about our videos we want to hear directly from you love you guys always 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 thank you